let's give you context of uh, why we're talking about the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro and what's in it for you tonight. Uh, the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro was established in 2000, that is the 5th of December. Uh, it is one of eight metros in the country. Uh, it is the economic powerhouse of the Eastern Cape. It is a major seaport and an automotive manufacturing center in South, Afri South Africa. Here are the key economic sectors uh, in Nelson Mandela Bay. Uh, manufacturing, community services, finance, trade, as well as transport. Looking at the numbers, in 2011, the African National Congress won that metro with 51.9%, uh, the Democratic Alliance, 40%. Congress of the People, 4% or close to 5%. United Democratic Movement there, uh, just below a percent. Uh, in 2016, the Democratic Alliance won the uh, Metro by 46.71%. The African National Congress by 40.92%. And the Economic Freedom Fighters coming in at 5%. United Democratic Movement at just below 2%. That is the lay of the land currently. And of course, the big parties want an outright majority, both the ANC and the Democratic Alliance having campaigned there this past weekend. Now, panel tonight, Nelson Mandela Bay Mayor and DA Mayoral Candidate Ngaba Banga, the Deputy Executive Mayor and uh, UDA Mayoral Candidate Lukolo Namete, and uh, EFF Nelson Mandela Bay <coughs> Chairperson Kanya Ngrisha, ANC's Nelson Mandela Bay Regional Coordinator, Luyolo Ngakula. Let's get your views tonight on this conversation. Will any, or let me rather say, do any of these parties deserve an outright majority? 072-110-5584. You want us to take you live? Send us a WhatsApp message. We'll take you live tonight with your questions for our panel. Gentlemen, good evening, and thank you very much for your time tonight and joining us here on In Focus. If I can have all of you unmuting your mics, so that uh, we can have a smooth conversation and uh, we'll be able to hear you. Uh, mayor Panga, let me start with you because, of course, you are the sitting mayor. You came in in December. <coughs> if we look at uh, the uh, report on key performance areas, midterm report, it tells you that on your overall performance, the metro is uh, performing at 36%. On the key issue of basic service delivery, out of the five, that you needed to achieve, one was achieved, two partially achieved, and two achieved below the target that was set. We'll get into the details of what was achieved and what was not achieved. But when you look at that picture, it doesn't paint a picture of a successful administration, does it? I'm happy that you are raising this report. Uh, that report is, it reflects the failure of the ANC uh, when it was in a coalition government. you remember that our first budget started in July, right now, just in July. I had to save, save, save 11 billion rand. That was taken by National Treasury in grants because of poor governance and the, how the ANC have broken down systems and management of governance here. In December last year, the only time we got this money and to spend it, we started in, in March because there were no contracts uh, just for, for barbs, for building roads, for maintaining streets, for water management. I had to start from the start with our coalition partners, the UDM, COPE, and the ACTP. We had to start things. Come to Port Elizabeth, please don't just read the numbers that reflect the poor governance of the ANC. We have changed this as a construction site. We're building roads, we're building um, uh, infrastructure up here. I have connected the water system, finance it in this new budget uh, for UDNIT, which was going to run out of water. We are constructing a city. I want to invite you to come see the real construction of a city. That 36%, it's the budget circle of the ANC, which started in 20, 20, 2020, 2021. My budget started in July, if you understand the budget circle of local government. That's the failures of the ANC. I'm happy that we have seen it yourself. Let's talk then about what you have uh, uh, managed to achieve having come in. Informal housing electrification target of 1,873. What uh, uh, is the target uh, so far, or at least the number so far that you have achieved? We, we are electrifying uh, uh, informal settlements. Uh, I can tell you uh, the deputy mayor is responsible for electricity. What I have done is to formalize 
um, the, 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 the informal settlement, what, which were not recognized by the ANC. The ANC government allow invasion. It has never formalized those. We have started putting up, electrifying those areas. We've got 300 million rand for informal upgrading, which is going to be rolled out. Now, I'm talking about the budget that I have created in July, which is going to be rolled out to make sure that we improved um, uh, informal settlements. We are fixing potholes in the city. Every week, at least we have a target of uh, 1,200 potholes in fixing them. We have a target of 3,000 um, um, uh, water leaks that we are fixing. We have put up a, a team to, to deal with that. We are building and res resurfacing roads uh, in the city. And I'm happy that we have appointed almost all executive directors under the ANC government. We have acting, acting, acting director and acting um, everywhere. Now we have all executive directors being appointed. This is what National Treasury is saying. This is not National Cocktail is saying. It's saying since we took over nine months back, the stability and good governance in Nelson Mandela. Yeah. It's not me. That's why even National Treasury have been able to listen to us when we're saying declare Nelson Mandela a disaster and drought. They failed to do that. I was able to convince ANC deputy ministers, right. um, the deputy minister of finance and deputy minister of culture, because when we govern, we do things better. And I thank my coalition partners, the UDM, COPE, and the ACTP for the collaboration, because together we're able to have a stable coalition. All right. This coalition... Thank, thank you, man. Let's get the NC to respond to that. Nine months ago, Luyolo, the metro was bad, right? 36% performance. Um, now, nine months later, it's doing a whole lot better. It's a construction site. Uh, informal settlements are being electrified. Potholes, 1,200 of them are being fixed on a monthly basis. Well, um, there is a fallacy. What we have from the executive mayor and the Democratic Alliance is basically an abdication of a responsibility because what the executive mayor and the DA failed to tell you and the viewers is that they assumed political office last day in December. So between December and July in the next budget cycle, they presided over the first case of the metro. Thus, they had a responsibility to discharge with regards to its spending and the discharging of basic services. So governance in Nelson Mandela has collapsed. What we have seen is maladministration and corruption under their tenure. If anything, the city is riddled with potholes. Robots do not work in the city. There is no proper lighting. And if anything, safety is compromised in the city. Yeah. That is why, for instance, you know, um, not to degenerate to anything, you are unable to have an account even around the question of safety of citizens. It is Mayor Banga who was just involved in an accident about a month ago, and no one is able to even provide an account around that because there's no proper lighting. Yeah. The robot to work in the city itself. Yeah. So, so, so what you have there but, is but, a but, 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 but Luyolo, what, you, you have not spoken to your target. You're speaking to the Democratic Alliance's target. Let's talk to your target in 2020. If you look at the 20, uh, July uh, 2020 up until December 2020 report that we are uh, looking at, uh, housing of um, uh, uh, subsidized uh, uh, housing, number of subsidized housing completed, under your administration, zero. Number of formal sites serviced out of 1,598 achieved, zero. Number of uh, public transport access points out of five that you were supposed to have achieved in the target, only one. I want you to respond to that failure before you point out what the DA has not done in the last uh, nine months. And tell me, what is it about that failure that the ANC is proud of? When we continue next here on In Focus, 072-110-5584. Let's get your views tonight. You live in Nelson Mandela Bay. The uh, metro uh, mayor says that they are fixing potholes. There are 1,200 potholes every month. Other potholes on the roads? Let us know. They're saying they're electrifying uh, homes there. Are the homes being electrified? Let us know. 072-110-5584. You can tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. The conversation continues in a moment.
Live tonight with us here on In Focus, Newsroom Africa, Channel 405. We're in conversation with the mayoral candidates in the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro. The battle is on, hitting up there uh, for uh, that particular metro and each of the big parties wanting an outright majority. Well, the question for you tonight, do any of them deserve an outright majority? What with the targets that have not been met? And what is uh, your current impression of this administration? You say they're fixing things and things are better now. Are they really better? Let us know what your views are. We'll take you live tonight. Liola, let me get back to you and give you an opportunity to respond to those targets. No, with respect to the question of the targets, Tabo, um, it is quite simple. Yes, one, the ANC was in a coalition uh, with other smaller parties. And it was the ANC which, which, which pronounced itself that coalitions do not work simply because it was in a coalition with smaller parties which do not have a constituency base, which have a disregard for the rule of law and any legislative processes. That is why you had a collapse of government. And I think it becomes important that we raise facts here. When the National Treasury had withheld the equitable share of the Nelson Mandela Metro, it was the African National Congress which had championed the question of the turnaround strategy up until a point whereby it was resolved on and adopted in council which was opposed by the parties like the EFF, which was opposed by parties like the UDM, which also contributed towards the stabilization of, one, the administrative situation, the political situation in the municipality itself. So, yes, we would agree as the ANC that, one, coalition governments have seen a collapse of government and have seen a collapse of the administration. It was ourselves as the ANC which publicly went out and said that coalitions, even though they're a new phenomena in our young democracy, they are not sustainable and they do not work in the context of Nelson Mandela Bay. All right, so some technicalities there. Loyola will try and get you back again to finish that thought. But uh, let's, let's get the EFF to respond to that. Kanya, uh, co coalitions are to be blamed for this lack of uh, a delivery in, in the metro. Uh, I think... Uh, these comrades of the ANC uh, and the A, but I'll specifically speak to the ANC, they are, they are wanting to run away from responsibility. No one forced them to sign or to enter into coalition agreements. They entered coalition agreements very well, and knowing what the, um, you know, the negative impacts of going into a coalition agreement. With coalitions, uh, you work with everyone that is in that uh, agreement with you. Uh, but the problem is that their interest was involved in tenders, and as a result, uh, there was a high level of kleptocracy within uh, that particular uh, stage which they were leading uh, as government. So they must not run away from responsibility and say coalitions do not work and so on and so forth. Because they were part of the coalition, they must accept the blame and take an account. And that is the problem specifically with the NC in general in most of the municipalities in which they are leading, and also government as a whole, is that they do not account to the people whom they are serving. Now, the core responsibility of a local government municipality is to bring services to the people. It's very simple. That is the core function of a, of a municipality. So it's very disappointing when a black uh, government like the ANC, I mean, needs to be told that informal settlements, for example, needs to be formalized. They should be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. That, uh, I mean, a, a white party, a so-called white party like the DA does that, and they failed uh, to do that. And we are told that, no, it's because uh, we're in a coalition. That is why we're, in, in, we we're not able to do certain things and so on and so forth. Hence, we are saying that under the EFF government, we'll be able to bring services to our people. For instance, as the EFF, we are very well known in terms of articulating uh, the issue of land. And in fact, by the way, for the ANC to even adopt the land policy, because they have been dragging their feet up until the EFF made this question of land an issue and put pressure on them, they even adopted in their conference because they saw that they would have a revolt amongst their own members if they do not adopt the land question and adopt uh, and change Section 25 of the Constitution and expropriate land for, without compensation for equal distribution. Yeah. How, 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 Luel, how do you explain the fact that it is coalition that would lead to the metro owing creditors 1.394 billion rands, 346 million of that being current? A bulk of that which you owe is electricity, as well as uh, you're owing staff leave pay 
amounting to $298 million. Uh, Why is that the fault of the coalition? Well, I think probably even with respect to the question itself, um, what I have stated is that, yes, we, are, we, are, we were in a coalition as the African National Congress, which was unstable due to a conglomeration of smaller parties which had no governance experience, which also contributed towards a instability in the municipality. It was ourselves as the ANC which boldly pronounced on this particular issue and then disabused ourselves from the coalition. I think that becomes the first point to state. But secondly, as well, in terms of an account, any presiding leadership, any leadership which presides over council, has the responsibility of providing an account to that particular effect. So it does become important that you take a responsibility to the extent that was presided over council itself. But the fact here is that since December, we have not been in association, we have not been in any coalition which is presided over the affairs of the city. And also that particular period, it has been led by the DA-led coalition. So it is not a question of the ANC running away from any taking of responsibility. If it does, I think it does become important to also remind um, the fighter from the EFF, even on the question of the informal settlements, it was the ANC in this council which submitted a motion around protection of informal settlements with respect to evictions or an eviction policy which has been championed by the Democratic Alliance in this particular city. So those are the issues which the ANC has been proactively championing in Nelson Mandela Bay. So, so, so what we then have uh, in terms of protection of informal settlements, it is not then a, a victory for the DA or something which the DA must want to claim political points over. It, has, is, it is as a consequence of motions which have been submitted by the African National Congress itself. Yeah. But what we must be able to deal with is that to what extent is the current political leadership able to provide an account around the affairs of the city itself? And that is why you hear me saying that there's an abdication of a responsibility, particularly from the executive mayor and the Democratic Alliance. Yeah. Because the fact here is that our city remains dirty. Uh, you go to our townships, the current administration only prioritizes the cleanliness of uh, areas such as Summer Strand and your affluent areas. The city is riddled with potholes. There is maladministration and various um, situations of corruption in the administration, which the DA is not only complicit in, but presiding over itself. Yeah. So, so, so <clears throat> they like to project as well a picture of them running a good governance yeah. or being able to govern properly, whereas they are unable to do so. All right. So we, 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 let, let, let's get them to, to, to respond to those issues that you're raising as well. Deputy Mayor, good evening. Good to have you with us. Uh, talk to me about those targets. They're saying you are the one who's looking at electrification. Uh, out of 1,873 uh, performance target that is set for you this financial year, how many have you electrified? Uh, thank you very much, Kabo. I'm, I'm, proud, I'm proud to say that uh, we are a government that uh, is working for, for the people. When we took over, uh, the city was a mess. The city was in a dark state because of uh, the ANC that is uh, uh, not capable of uh, delivering services to the people. When we took over, the city was very dark, Kabo. <clears throat> I'm proud to say that uh, the people who that are coming to, uh, to the city, uh, there is light. Uh, our N2 is, 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 is light. 60%. Uh, uh, so you bought, uh, you, bought, you, bought, you, bought, you bought a couple of globes, right? For the M2. There was no contract of the globe under the ANC led mm. uh, run yeah. when we When we, we took over, we put things into places. Uh, starting in the in the in the department of uh, of a supply chain where they were fighting there, there was there were no instability. We've managed to put things in place. We've managed uh, to bring stability in that in that uh, department. As we speak, we have globes. Uh, uh, informal settlements are being formalized. We are putting electricity everywhere. So I'm happy to say that. But, but, but that's what I'm asking. Ways. I'm not asking you how many globes have you bought. I'm asking you how many houses that didn't have electricity that now have electricity. All the formal, uh, informal uh, uh, houses didn't have electricity under the administration of uh, the ANC. I'm proud to say that 
80% of the informal settlement that we have now, we are busy constructing, putting electricity on those informal settlements. Right. 80 percent you're saying and that's the one that's the number that we need to 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 to, to verify 80 percent of those informal settlements you're saying you're now building uh, electricity but what do you say to this uh, uh, issue that uh, the anc raises that actually those out of those 80 percent uh, much of the budget is prioritized for the affluent areas no that's not true because you will find out uh, in our in our township that's where the informal settlements are. We are busy. Yeah. <laughs> for, for instance, in Motherwell, uh, all the informal settlements that are there uh, have electricity, and some who are not finishing, but there, there is construction work that is, is happening. So uh, that statement is not is not true. Sam. Mayor, let's talk then about some of the issues that are still rather prevalent uh, when it comes to the administration uh, of, of the metro. One of the other big issues that I am particularly picking up and seeing is this question of overtime. The overtime budget runs into 300 million, um, a majority of it going to safety and security, sanitation services, water services, as well as electricity. Why, why are you paying so much overtime? At this rate, it's, 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 it's really getting out of hand. Thank you very much, sir. I want you to understand, I like that because this reflects the performance of the NC. This is an evaluation of the report of the... The reason why is that the ANC imposed, through these motions that Mr. Ngagula is talking about, he's proud of those motions. It's his fault. They put up a motion to insource 900 security officers without putting them in an organogram, not only an organogram, without attaching a budget into them. The escalation of overtime have escalated in that way because of their... When we're governing, we first employ the first group of, a, of, a, of security officers where we insourced working with other parties we put a structure in a gonogram, not through a country. And the National Treasurer, by the way, let me inform you, wants them for taking wrong decision to pay. A first group of ANC councillors will be paying the first two million rand that we are going to take. These councillors that voted for these irregular motions are going to pay, and they know about it. Council have passed a resolution in November before I took over, because we forced them as a DA to do that. National Treasurer forced them to do that. Therefore, they're going to pay this amount of money, and they are well aware. The ANC, when it governed, it introduced irregular expenditure. It lost 21 million rand, which they introduced an irregular drain tender which killed, assassinated 21 people that were killed because of the ANC irresponsibility in getting into the tender system. When the ANC govern, it breaks things down. When the DA-led coalition govern, it gets things done. That is uh, the uh, mayoral uh, candidate for the Democratic Alliance in the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, Mababanga Lutolo, Namete, Kanya, Nisha, as well as Luyolo Ngagula with us uh, tonight. Taking your views uh, as well and taking you live on 072 As you're hearing, lots of issues being raised. 80% of um, uh, informal settlements are now actually on their way to being electrified or at least they are building some kind of structure i want to hear from you if you are seeing these structures being built uh, in in your township uh, where you are and let us know on twitter at newsroom 405 we're back in a moment back with you tonight on in focus newsroom africa channel 405 thanks for staying on on this build up to the november 1st local government elections the focus tonight on the nelson mandela bay metro as the race heats up uh, with the big parties gunning for an outright majority uh, in those parties, currently being governed by the Democratic Alliance through a coalition, uh, and uh, previously, of course, the ANC uh, also governed through a coalition. Wow, we asked the question, do any of these parties deserve an outright majority? By the way, look forward to a conversation a little bit later on, uh, uh, on In Focus, where we'll be talking the facilitation of um, women-owned businesses 
in the economy uh, of South Africa. Dr. Smogi Levilaga is the chairperson of the Black Management Forum in Gauteng, as well as Shoki Shabala, the acting director general of the Department of Women and Youth and Persons with Disabilities, I guess, tonight, just after nine. But we get back to Ngaba Bangalu, Olo Namete, Kanyang Nisha, as well as Luyolo Ngagula with us uh, tonight. And they, of course, outlining some of what uh, they have achieved. Kanya, you, you, you look surprised when these uh, people are talking about, for example, protection of informal settlements. They're talking about um, over time being spent on uh, 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 securities uh, who are being um, uh, uh, outsourced and, and so on and, and so forth. Why are these things surprising to you? Well, number one, the ANC has been in government for over 28 years. So it took them 28 years to realize or to identify with the cries of their own people. Uh, that is what is surprising. And they are only doing this because they, are, they know that they are facing a revolt from the people uh, because many of the voters are rejecting them continuously, election after election after election. Uh, the reason why we are in this mess of, co of, co of, co there's this mess of coalition is because they've been rejected, because they've been in power before, but they continue to decrease and decline. Uh, over and over. So is the DA. I mean, the ANC and the DA, really, if you look at it in terms of policies, they are more or less the same because uh, they are not clear. In, in fact, not even they are not clear. They support the tender system, which is, a, which, which is the main thing that is problematic in terms of uh, creating corruption within our municipality because the highest <laughs> level of kleptocracy happens there within that tender system. It is the EFF, by the way, that passed a motion to, for the insourcement uh, of security guards. We also passed a motion for the enforcement of uh, cleaners, uh, meter readers. Those were later on rejected uh, by the ANC and the DA, by the way. It is because we identify with our people, and of course, we want to implement Cardinal Pillar Number no. 3, which talks about incapacit incapacitating uh, the government, the capacity of government to be able to do work for itself instead of using a, a riddled tender system, which is a very much loopholed. With, uh, with corruption. So these uh, people of the ANC and the DA must not be disingenuous. The DA does not care, identify with black people. Uh, I mean, you can even go to Cape Town. They focus there in terms of the white areas within the black community areas. I mean, we saw a video there where they are ruling uh, more than 50% in power in the municipality where a black person was dragged out of a shack naked. That is the type of attitude that they have uh, towards black people. They are just behaving here yeah, because they are in this coalition. If they in, in a majority, if they had full majority of political power in the municipality, they would be very, very, very arrogant. When, John, uh, John Stenism campaigning there on Monday, Kanye said the Nelson Mandela Metro has got a potential of looking like Cape Town. Uh, they've got le rail, they've got uh, uh, road networks, they've got the harbor there. Uh, if things are governed properly, uh, things could be uh, better there, you could be amongst one of the well-governed metros, just like Cape Town. You see, the problem with the DA is that on the outside, they look good. They will have a clean city and all of that, but when you go deep into the townships, they neglect, they've got no care for black people, for the cries of our people uh, in the townships. Uh, you, if, if you had even the, the debate that we had last week with, uh, uh, some time ago with the, with the mayor, uh, one of the things that he mentioned, he was talking about a blue flag for a beach for crying out loud. Yet you've got people in informal settlement that are crying for land that do not have electricity. Some of them have been, uh, those electricity boxes have been confiscated, which are, the, which are the main core issues of our people. So they do not identify with the cries of our people. They are only interested in pleasing businesses and having blue flags for beaches uh, and all of that. We are saying that it is only the EFF that identifies with the cries of our people because no one spoke about the land up until the EFF spoke of land. No one thought of insourcing security guards up until the EFF passed the motion of insourcing security guards. Security guards. By the way, on Friday, we, and we have invited security guards to a meeting with the deputy president where we will inform them about the local government manifesto of the EFF, which talks about insourcing the rest uh, of the security guard so that our black people can be able to have dignity and stop working through this tender system that is that the NC and the DA government have been too comfortable uh, in working with. 
we inform those insourced, uh, those security guards who want to be insourced, that if they want to be insourced, they must vote for the EFF because it is only the EFF that talks of insourcement, uh, not the DA or the ANC. Right. Liolo, uh, this metro with great history of liberation heroes and uh, legends, uh, the use, for example, of the name Nelson Mandela and his legacy to rename that city uh, says a lot about uh, where it comes from. But is the ANC beginning to lose legitimacy in that heartland, as Kanye is saying? Well, um, the first point I must concede to is that um, a while ago, there has been a trust, there was a trust deficit between us and our people due to us self-inflicting to some extent. But the ANC has since committed itself to a path of renewal. And as such, a uh, reference or a reference point would be the recent candidate selection processes which have recently undergone as the African National Congress in this region, which have been introduced by the NEC of the ANC. What we have as candidates in the various wards are people who are a product of a popular process which starts internally within the ANC and then is cascaded or elevated to a community VT level. So in all 60 wards in Nelson Mandela, what we have as candidates are people who are a product of a popular process. That is only but one of our attempts to mitigate and close the gap and the trust deficit between ourselves as the ANC and our constituency. Yes, as the African National Congress, we've committed mistakes in the past. That is why we've been the first ones to admit to those mistakes, and hence we've committed ourselves to renewing the African National Congress. Yeah. And as such, and an implication of that is because uh, the implication of that would be that a cohesive and a stable ANC is able to have a better material impact in terms of it transforming the lives of our people. Because the resident in Nelson Mandela Bay are sick and tired of coalition governments. They want a ANC All right, uh, we, we, keep, we seem uh, to keep losing Luyolo there uh, on the line. Uh, let, let's look at some of what the people are saying uh, on WhatsApp tonight. Uh, 072 110 as we get into that conversation. Uh, Leona Simmons in Blue Water Bay saying the ANC has been in power long enough to show that they are incapable of running the country. They do not even have the ability to run their own party, shielding each other and, uh, uh, each other and only during elections try to fix up what they've broken. Give the small parties an outright majority and if they fail to vote in another party uh, don't fall for that same lie uh, forever all right let's take more from bongani mabusela in nelson mandela bay hi tabo the state of nelson mandela bay metro is in its worst form robots are not working there's dirt all over the city and townships crime has reached its pinnacle uh, point and uh, uh, pinnacle point rather and service delivery is on the basis of color of your skin the city is a ghost terrain at night mayor banger that's what the people are saying here from badela in st alban saying there are a lot of potholes in nelson mandela bay mr naba banger is not being honest the street lights and robots are not working in most of the areas people are not seeing what you see mabusela is a friend of nagula nagula the, the one who's here eh? He's a councillor of the ANC. How is he going to see things? Uh, even this one in St. Alban. The people of Nelson Mandela can see, I can tell you, my friend, come here and see a prosperous city that we have built in nine months with our coalition partners. This city is competing with Johannesburg, Cape Town, and we have changed. I'm not saying that. It's ministers of the ANC who are saying the stability, we have changed things for good. It's the national treasure, it's cocktail of the ANC. If you are given accolades by their departments and their ministers who say Nelson Mandela is better under this government than it was yes. under an ANC government. Because it's a very when contradicting we message people, because the pre the, when, the the, when the president was there uh, this past week, he told the people that uh, uh, under the DA administration, they have not built a single house. Can I tell you what the president was misbriefed? He was lying himself. Do you know who built the house? It's national government. That's what the law says. It tells our president does not understand where the mandate of housing development is. In 2016, Minister Sisulu took the power away from Nelson Mandela municipality and gave it to HDA and ANC agency. I fought for it. I got it back. I got 46 million now, 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 now. Last week, 
I've approved 345 contractors to start building housing. I'm convincing them myself. It's me who have convinced them yeah. to bring back the function. I started in 2016 when I'm MMC for Human Settlement. Do you know what the ANC have done in destroying our people? They have influenced people to build shacks in front of Kwamakaki, a middle-class black residence. They are saying they're giving people land instead of de destroying property value for houses of black people who have worked so hard. When the ANC governs, it destroys livelihoods. Yeah. The people of Kwamakaki, they know this. The ANC passed a motion for invasion in this city. Everywhere is invaded. We are unable to put sites and services because the ANC promoted invasion. It's the story of the ANC. The people in Swarkov Valley are very angry. They bought these houses in bonds. The ANC promoted invasion. That's the ANC led by Ngapula. When I was in MMC for human, I stopped human uh, invasion. Yeah. When I'm a mayor in the second, I will stop invasion. The, a, the, the ANC, Luyolo, promoted invasion. Is the ANC willing to concede that the decision to have HDA be the delivery for state subsidies, uh, subsidized houses was a wrong decision? It was not a wrong decision because that particular decision was taken as a consequence of an intervention wherein there was hallmarks of corruption in the Human Settlements Directorate in the municipality. Hence, then, there was an intervention by both the national and the provincial government so as to stabilize and assist the municipality in discharging um, its functions, in discharging part of its delegated functions yeah. in terms of housing delivery. Mm. But what we have seen witnessed, what we have since witnessed post-2016 under the DA-led coalition was a blatant non-cooperation by municipal officials, by the political leadership, which was leading that particular directorate at that point in time, Mr. Ngababanga, which then had a direct material impact and impeded on the question of housing construction in Nelson Mandela. And that has since continued and still continues up until it was the caucus of the African National Congress in council through the standing committee, which then unlocked that particular bottleneck in order for there to be a release of funding because they do not have an interest as the Democratic Alliance in the question of the housing construction, they do not have an interest on the question of rectification. So if anything here, the Democratic Alliance, the UDM and the EFF are complicit in this crime against our residents in Nelson Mandela, which has resulted in the non-construction of houses. And it is the ANC which has been vocal in championing that particular issue. No. And the reality is that, Tabo, the facts are there. Yeah. That is why you don't have us as the ANC, like the UTM. Yeah, I, 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 want, I want to take a break, Luyolo. When I come, I want you to give me the facts. How has the UDM, the EFF, and the DA impeded the construction of houses in Nelson Mandela Bay? Let's get your views. 072-110-5584. Tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. We'll continue in a moment. This past weekend, you need to answer to, 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 to that question. But Lior, let me bring you in here. Uh, tell me exactly how did the uh, UDM, the EFF, and the DA uh, impede the construction of houses in Nelson Mandela Bay? Thanks, Tabo. Let's deal with the facts. And first, I'll start by stating that it is the ANC since 1994 which has delivered over 40,000 units in Nelson Mandela Bay. Under the DA led coalition, only 27 of those units have been delivered. Now, here are the facts. Naba Panga correctly states that he was a MMC of human settlements. He presided over a non cooperation of officials with the provincial department of human settlements non-submission of plans in order for processes to unfold which would result not only in the release of funds as well as housing construction. Ngaba Banga knows for a fact that there has been an intervention in Nelson Mandela. And the intervention, its success or failure is tested against a process. It is the UTM and the EFF because of their own plutocratic and commercial interests 
which have been championing the question of a return of a function outside of a due process where you have a directorate which has in essence collapsed. Baba Panga himself is here. He presided over that table. These are not stories. These are the facts. The UTM, which today wants to adjudicate their responsibility, was complicit in that because at some point in time during the council term, Monga Meli Bobani, may his soul rest in peace, was an executive mayor. He's on record, he's in the media. When the ANC was raising this issue of housing construction and the question of ratification, and being supported at a shallow level and a basis by the EFF itself, those have been the inhibitors at a factual level and an a substantive level which have impeded on the question of housing construction. It is only when the, the, the standing committee through the legislature was petitioned by the caucus of the African National Congress, there has then since been a breakthrough which has since resulted in the provincial department of human settlements re releasing a trench of funding which would then first test the capabilities and the capacity of the municipality. And those are as a result of the African National Congress. So the, the, 40, the 46 million that uh, Mayor Banger says he now received, you're saying is as a result of uh, the work of the ANC? He doesn't know where it comes from, Chabu. He's got no clue. He does not have a clue. He must interrogate Yo. the process because the ANC, even though it is not presiding, it has a particular judiciary duty in which its council must discharge in terms of providing and being at the center of solutions of our residents. Naba Banga just sees 46 million comes, but he does not know the process which unearths 46 million. It is at the standing committee as tempered and terminated by the African National Congress. All right, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor, you're, 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 you're laughing. You, you've been complicit. You supported this uh, external directorate along with, with the EFF, which was impeding the construction of houses and participated in this no submission of plans and uh, the ratification process? No, I think firstly, uh, Umar keeps on contradicting uh, uh, <coughs> himself. How can the ANC uh, fight for this 46 million whether it is not in government? Umar somewhere is, 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 is misleading the public. <coughs> But what I want to raise is that all these cases of corruption that uh, emanate from the previous coalition led by the ANC, uh, you will find out uh, uh, this function was taken away from uh, the institution or the local government because of the corrupt, corrupt of the ANC, corruption of the ANC through their, uh, their officials that are there in the supply chain who are busy uh, uh, seeking uh, the politicians uh, to uh, uh, tell the system. But Umax again, really, really, really is showing that uh, uh, they, they are not uh, to be trusted in this uh, local uh, coming election. TFF, I want you to respond because you've been uh, cited here as being complicit as well in this uh, impediment of delivery of housing. Uh, number one, first I want to say uh, the mayor, they seemingly incorporated that white arrogant tendency of the DA because he has stated here on national TV that the informal settlement next to Kwamata, who uh, is occupied by black people, uh, that they are devaluing the property mm. of Kwamata. When people mm. occupy land, it's not because they want to, it's because they are poor and they want a sense of dignity. And as a black person, those are the basics that you should be understanding. So it's disappointing, but uh, it's expected that the DA, it is the way that they operate. Uh, and that is the type of tendencies that you get from the DA because they put the interests of businesses and white people first. So, so as the EFF, you, you supported the invasion now, of that land? Yes, we support invasion. Of, it's not, in fact, we don't, we're not even saying it's invasion. It's occupation of land because you can't say our people invaded land. Remember, it's a free gift from God. No one has got a right to tell you that if you occupy land in summer strand, you need to pay two million rand. Who, and, who on earth has got that right? Because land uh, was taken away from our people. History will tell you, and uh, they took it for themselves. In 1994, uh, the economic part of liberation was, ne was never dealt with. We only achieved political freedom. 
we still are yet to receive to achieve uh, economic liberation. Hence, the strategic mission of the EFF is the attainment of economic freedom in our lifetime by the implementation of the seven non-negotiable pillars of the EFF. Number one being the most important, the expropriation of land without compensation for equal distribution to our people. Number two, Ngagula is just using nice English. You must not be misled by Ngagula or the people that are listening to him. It's like those university students that use nice English, but, uh, uh, that, but they've got no effect. I mean, it's very simple. There's no need for confusing, uh, creating uh, complications of these things. The housing should be a duty of, this, of, uh, of local government municipality. You need to incapacitate the state, local government, to be able to do those things. If they had done that, they would not be dealing with those issues of contracting and dealing with contractors and going through the tender system, which is very complicated because you get a lot of greedy people that want to have a piece of the pie, which, it, by the way, that pie is state coffers. And if you take from state coffers, it means you impact on the service delivery of our people. How on earth can the EFF be involved in kleptocracy when we are not even in government? You must go and look up the, the, the definition of that word because it's not possible. Kleptocracy can only be, you know, uh, can only, those people that be involved in kleptocracy is, them, is themselves because it is them that have been in government. The DA also is now currently in government. We are government in waiting. After 1st November, we are going to go into government. Then you can accuse us of kleptocracy according to the facts that will be before you. Uh, Mayor Banga, uh, you don't even know where the 46 million is coming from. You, might, you don't understand these things. You just see 46 million in the account and you go, great, I got this. No, man, Nakula, you know, uh, it's not telling the truth. I met with the Director General of, uh, of the Department of Housing. We discussed this and, uh, and then acting city manager. Um, I started discussing this with Ms. Sisulu when we was in human settlement, by the way. Uh, I had, they know that I had good relationships with, 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 relationship with her to make sure that we get this function better. Back. Can I tell you one thing? Ngagula must tell you, under the ANC government last year, we lost 500 million rand. The Eastern Cape has been the worst in performing in housing delivery because of the, the fact that in Nelson Mandela, the ANC government could not act against the officials who were not cooperating with the provincial government. I was the leader of the official op opposition. I asked those questions. Right, right. The effects on it. Right. Why housings are not developed in we, Nelson we, Mandela? We, we are... HDA could not be to develop anything in Nelson Mandela. HDA is an agency deployed by national government, by President Ramaphosa, who blames a government with no mandate to develop housing. We've got, we've got to leave it there. Mayor Banga, unfortunately, I am completely out of time. Appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you very much for coming through, gentlemen. Uh, Luyolo, Kanya, Lukolo, Lukolo, as well as uh, Naba Banga. Thank you very much. And thanks to